The story continues from where it left off in the last part. Xiang Yi and his friends had defeated the corpse pillar, Raymond, and were about to leave the dwarf kingdom. It was later revealed that although Isabella forbade cruelty against humans, they still lived under cruel tyranny as they were treated like animals in the demon tribe. Also, Sophisus had spent his entire life searching for his brother, but found only disappointment because he never found him. However, when he found Xiang Yi, a little ray of hope appeared because the resemblance was overwhelming and made Sophisus happy since he thought that the relative he loved so much had appeared. Even if Sophisus' brother returned one day, he would still treat Xiang Yi like a brother. The next day, Mona decided to stay in the dwarves kingdom to learn more about the forge. Martin was sad because the king could blame him for everything, but Xiang Yi and his friends agreed to take the blame. They said goodbye to Martin and all returned to the kingdom. On the other hand, Roland returned to the demon realm, but had an issue with the door pillar. But Lillian helped Roland because they had a deal. After he entered, he saw the other demon pillars. Roland already knew Liberty, the magical pillar, Biowit, the pillar of misfortune, and Wadoso, the sword pillar. Lillian confirmed Raymond's death by going through Roland's memories. Lillian was happy because Isabella was still as beautiful as ever. She then made Roland a pillar and gave him demonic powers. Lillian ordered Roland to send soldiers to the borders of the human kingdom to greet Isabella and capture Xiang Yi. Meanwhile, in the human kingdom, Xiang Yi and his group are arrested and accused of being traitors. However, they are protected by the academy teachers, and Sophisus takes the blame. Angus revealed that Isabella was the former queen of the demon tribe, and that Angus had already taken control of Xiang Yi's business guild. Isabella and Xiang Yi escaped with the help of some teachers, but were almost caught by Sado who wanted to fight with Sophisus. Eli intervenes, and Nanai and their master distract their pursuers. Xiang Yi and Isabella escape, but Sophisus decides to stay in the kingdom to protect the young king. On their way to the demon realm, Xiang Yi's group encounters demons in two pillars, Liberty and Beowit, blocking their way. Isabella explains Liberty's resemblance to her as the result of Lillian giving her a portion of her stolen powers. The demons attack the ship, but Xiang Yi and his group could still escape. They thought about going to the demon tribe, but Liberty appeared in her real demon form. Isabella was concerned and wondered how Liberty could use that form, as only royalty should be able to. But they were saved by Vasily, who gave them books to learn magic and change their appearance. The group disguises themselves as demons and enters the demon realm, where they find demon children enslaved. Darkolo appeared and revealed that he would join the winning side explaining that the war between humans and demons began with the creation of the Red Stone to revive the god. Isabella wants to stop the war, but is warned by Darkulo about the dangers of opposing the gods. Lillian punishes Liberty for attacking Isabella, but stops when she realizes Liberty enjoys it and wants to protect Isabella. The group searches for the dagger used to seize Isabella's power in the Demon Queen's palace and fights demons along the way. Ali fights Roland while Isabella finds the dagger and asks her parents for forgiveness. Isabella ultimately meets Lillian after overcoming numerous obstacles, while Xiang Yi engages Liberty, Isabella's clone, in combat. Xiang Yi cripples Liberty, and Isabella is astounded to learn that Lillian can survive grave wounds because of her extraordinary regeneration. When Isabella asks Lillian why she betrayed her, Lillian responds that she did everything so that Isabella would only love her. Isabella keeps attacking Lillian with her most powerful techniques because she is frustrated by Lillian's motivations. A severely injured Lillian devours Liberty to restore her abilities, but this backfires since Liberty is tainted with radioactive radiation. As a result of severe radiation poisoning, Lillian loses her body and powers, and she is reduced to a talking head. After overthrowing Lillian, Isabella reveals her plan to wed Xiang Yi and take the Demon Queen crown back in three days. Isabella later brings Xiang Yi to the royal tomb, where they question Lillian about her origins. Lillian claims to have been a being since the time of the gods. She describes how she came to enslave Mawad, a strong cleric who was punished for defying the gods. Xiang Yi takes Lillian's abilities and gives them to Isabella, who heals completely. The pair abandons Lillian in the mausoleum and resumes their wedding plans. Two days later, a royal wedding is performed in which Xiang Yi and Isabella are finally married. Sophisus was punished by Sado but refused to join Angus. He learned the truth about the world after being healed by Xiang Yi and intends to support the young king in rebelling against the gods. The Thorn Queen witnessed everything and left to inform Isabella. 
The demons held a wedding for the demon kings and celebrated. Xiang Yi and Isabella had their wedding night, and Xiang Yi has a strange dream where he encounters the god of nothingness but wakes up scared. Isabella explains to him that the women of the demon royal family transfer their demon power to their husbands, making him a true demon king. He discovers he can fly, and Isabella is happy that their ancestors accepted him. They receive a message from the Thorn Queen about Angus' plan to start a war, and both prepare for it. Isabella believes that with the help of Hudson and Xiang Yi, they can win the war because the founder chose him. They are ready for war and have communication transmitters for effective communication during the war. The war between the human and demon kingdoms has begun, with the human army being led by Angus and the demon army being led by Xiang Yi and Isabella. Despite Xiang Yi's attempt to stop the war, it continues with both sides using various weapons and tactics. The human army suffers significant losses due to the powerful weapons created by Xiang Yi and the demon air force led by Isabella. Despite this, the human army presses on, with the war griffin arriving to join the battle. However, they are trapped by Darkolo and ultimately defeated by the combined efforts of the demon army and Emery. The war ends with Xiang Yi regretting starting the war and planning to apologize to the Sophuses, but the human captains are still angry and want to continue fighting for their kingdom. However, despite the humans' losses and increasing death toll, Angus, their commander, doesn't interfere. Xiang Yi and Isabella then confront Angus after they take his family and captains into custody. He claims to do everything for the well-being of humans and to keep the gods asleep, minimizing the need for more sacrifices. Isabella tells him maybe she could have done the same before, but they have new hope now, and it was Xiang Yi, the prophet, who would kill the gods. Angus laughed and attacked them, showing them they were not as strong as they thought. But Xiang Yi defends himself and shows his strength. During the confrontation, Angus transforms into a partial dragon and battles with Xiang Yi, who forges demon king-style armor. Angus changes the color of his divine field ability to attack. During the battle, Xiang Yi notices that each color of Angus's divine field ability represents a specific function and has a 20-second limit. He creates a nuke and throws it at Angus, but he survives. Angus then changed his divine field ability by causing snow to fall, which started to cause destruction. This caused the knights and even Xiang Yi's weapons to disintegrate. Darkolo covers his comrades in a sphere, but Angus destroys it. Darkolo tries to intervene, and the three engage in a battle, with none of them able to defeat Angus. With Angus stronger, he turned Darkolo into ashes, since Darkolo wasn't a match for him. Eventually, Xiang Yi uses his forge field to trap Angus in a sphere of useless wood and detonates his R-bomb, causing the largest explosion known to humankind and destroying the sphere. The explosion eventually destroyed 30 layers of useless wood. After the powerful explosion, many people were scared and wondered if the regent had survived. However, Xiang Yi and Darkolo both survived the blast. Darkolo thought they had won the war as he detected no vital signs from Angus, but Angus showed up in his dragon form. Angus, who had sought to recruit Xiang Yi, decided to kill him. Despite using his Demon King power to break free, Angus overpowered Xiang Yi. During the fight, Xiang Yi tried to deduce how Angus protected himself from the explosion, but Angus revealed he used red stones in his Black Divine Field to absorb and return the attacks. Meanwhile, Isabella tries to help Xiang Yi but is stopped by Alina, who has betrayed the group and is now on Angus' side. Angus placed the Black Divine Field inside Xiang Yi, making him feel a strange sensation throughout his body. Despite being injured, Isabella managed to keep moving to help, but it was too late. Xiang Yi began to turn into ash and apologized to Isabella for not being able to continue fighting. He died, and his body disintegrated. Thanks for watching. So, do you think Xiang Yi died? And even if he did, would Isabel go on a revenge spree? And who do you think would win the final battle? Don't miss the next episode of My Wife is a Demon Queen. Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be the first to know when it drops. Trust us, you don't want to miss it.